Welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at a new product from a new company called Access Audio. And this is their first set called Professional Earbuds. So, you know, this one really began with sort of an out of the blue email that said, hey, you want to try some earbuds? And of course, I'm like, sure. Who doesn't want to try new earbuds? Um, and then a couple hours later, I sort of thought, I wonder if that was the right move. I wonder if these are just some repackaged version of some OEM earbuds that someone put their name on and they kind of marked up the price. So I sort of was excited and then there was some dread and then there was a couple weeks of waiting for it to be delivered. But I'm sort of happy to say that this one turned out very, very well. Very surprisingly good set. You know, actually someone put their name on it and probably actually tuned it, had a part in it. Um, it's a very, very good tuning, and we'll get into it um, in a little bit. But here is sort of the unboxing experience. This is the packaging. It's actually quite nice, probably up there with uh, about the, the price tag. It, it's actually kind of a nice packaging. And if we open it, so inside you sort of get a little mini letter from Ricky Farr, who is the one, um, is the name behind it, the one who tuned it. Um, many, many years as a concert promoter, music producer, and now a consumer electronics guy. And he is sort of behind the AXS team, the XS team. So you can scan that for the manual. And this is uh, sort of what you get inside. So a nice set of tips, large, small, medium, and large. And then the IEM itself, sort of, or the um, earbuds look like this. So not a uh, spectacularly different design from many, many earbuds that you've seen before. And again, this kind of goes back to, you get sort of an email out of the blue, and I go and look it up, and you're like, oh, this case kind of looks very familiar. You flip this up, and you're like, oh, okay, these kind of look a lot familiar too. So I really hope this is going to be, you know, a worthwhile endeavor. But um, yeah, there's not, uh, you know, as far as scrolling through Amazon and trying to find something unique looking, that stands out on the Amazon listings. I'm not sure this one is going to really do that. Um, I think the bulk of what really makes Access special um, is really inside and it's the tuning. So let's kind of jump right into it and really talk about that. So as I mentioned, this one was tuned by uh, music producer, concert producer, Ricky Farr. He goes back decades in the industry and uh, did a ton of work with some kind of 70s and 80s and 60s uh, musicians, uh, concert promotion, music promotion. Lately, um, he has definitely been part of the consumer electronics uh, audio products now. So he does have a few audio companies and kind of started some and sold some. And I guess AX or Access is their latest endeavor. So that's sort of a mini background on it. So as I was saying, as a consumer level TWS, you know, when you're comparing models on Amazon and you're looking for a random TWS, um, it's probably okay. It definitely hits a lot of the check marks. The uh, ambient noise cancellation definitely works. It has a voice, um, the voice pass-through mode, which actually works as well. So if you want to hear passing cars or people talking to you, um, you can definitely do that as well. Bluetooth 5.2, it only supports SBC codec as far as I know. That was what I seem to be connected at. Uh, and it does have a long 10 hour battery life. So yeah, I think it, it checks uh, a lot of the normal TWS things. That's definitely not what makes this one special or you know why they charge $100, $129 for it. I think where that really, that special value added piece really comes from. Um, this bit right here, you know, what makes the the access audio special is the tuning. Um, and they call it hand tuned for studio quality sound. And I really do think that, you know, Ricky Farr or someone very close to him had a very close personal hand in doing this tuning because it's, it's quite special or specialized. Um, and they definitely spent a ton of time thinking about this implementing this tuning on a driver that works in a TWS. I think there's just a very nice synergy between the tuning and the driver on this one. It it really shows that there was some thought put into it and probably a whole lot of trial and error to get it to the point where everyone was happy with the sound. So, you know, so I can't say it's a super looking box, but I will, I will kind of vouch for the tuning. It's, it's actually kind of top notch along with the driver. So 
let's take a very quick look at what the graph looks like before we talk about the sound. So the graph looks um, somewhat like an IM, sort of, it's definitely got this neutralish bass curve to it, and there's a very much sort of an intentional roll off here on the sub bass. Ricky Farr, when I went through his track listings on you know, test tracks, um, he was definitely trying to avoid fatigue and things that distract him from where he was sort of focused on the bulk of production work. So I do think this sub bass roll off is one of those things where, you know, he's just not a fan of it and maybe he thought it was a distraction or maybe it muddies up the mids a little bit. So either way, so that's sort of the first bit that's not quite typical. And then there's very shallow, bass shelf right into the mids, very linear mids. This is a mid-centric set. Um, the bulk of the magic happens right here in the mids and everything is sort of set up to feed into great sounding mids. So keep the bass kind of low, no bleed, um, very clean mids. The bass is there just to make things just a little more natural and I think that's exactly what it did. And then a real gentle rise right here into the gain area and then sort of down slope um, quite a bit and again I think this sort of dip right here in the upper treble is just something that he didn't really necessarily focus on it's not a part of what he preferred I think he thinks this is more of a perhaps more of a distraction or a fatigue bit so again this was brought back down quite a, you know, kind of enough for a not at least I am style on a, when you look at a graph but as far as treble presence I think he kind of nailed that part if you're looking for a ton of error, you know, it's, it's not going to have a ton of error, but yeah, I think he is very much focused right here on the mids and making sure those sounded, you know, as good as they can be in this form factor and codec and driver and battery life. Lots and lots of thought and intention to making those right. And I think he sort of nailed that very well. So if you're looking for sort of an end to end full range set, it sort of does that. I mean, these are, it still has sub bass and it still has treble, um, perhaps just not as boosted as you would expect uh, if you're used to IEMs or even some TWSs that tend to boost both those areas quite a bit. So sound, very much neutral-ish, fatigue reduced, inverted V like is what I would call that. So he really brought back the, so roll off the sub one end and then sort of bring down the treble for the other end. So sort of a reverse V pattern where you'd have a big sub bass shelf right here and maybe a treble uh, up for a big V pattern. That's This is sort of the opposite of that. So that's pretty cool. So inverted V, um, tuning with intention, like I said, um, he had a very much a point of view and what he wanted to execute and probably how he produced music over the decades of his career. And I think that very much shows in that tuning and which parts are important to him and which ones are not. So I think his intention was to really keep focus on what's important to production in a non-fatiguing way, like I said. Very much reduce the edges to allow focus on the middle. You know, this 3-point dB rise at 60 hertz in the bass, very gentle bass um, shelf, um, just enough to keep it natural, and then 8 dB at 2.7K in, in, the, in the gain area. just keeps things interesting and lively and detail without fatigue and i think he sort of nailed that bit right there 8 db is, is a really really nice number for this set and so roll the sub off like i said and the upper treble to prevent fatigue is what i think he really did there it may look slightly odd but very engaging and musical to me when i listen to it but do really consider it with your own library and how much you really are going to miss a slight sub roll off or a very much a upper treble roll off versus the benefit that you get from, you know, almost beautiful mids here with no fatigue, but plenty of detail and liveliness and energy and all those other things that I think he really spent a bunch of time on. Um, so quite well. So the bass, like I said, considering the driver, I think this one's about right. Um, that level kind of works for me in this sort of mid-centric tuning. I think I would call it presence without distraction or mudding the mids. I think that's what that bass shelf really accomplishes, is just to keep things, slight bass boost to keep it sounding natural um, without adding any any muddiness to the mids, just enough to keep it sounding about right. And I think he kind of nailed that level right there. So like I said, the mids are the meat of this sound, um, and this one is very mid-centric. 
it's surprisingly good for a TWS, and a lot of it is the tuning, and a lot of it is that tuning on that specific driver. Just surprisingly good. And like I said, kind of worried about getting it, but when I heard it and started listening, I'm like, I have to graph this thing to see what it actually looked like and what he was doing, because it's, it's sort of surprisingly good in that respect. Very natural and clean and detailed. More open sounding than I was expecting, especially from TWSs, which tend to be a little more V-shaped, a little more recessed. Um, some time was definitely spent um, on drivers and tuning here. And I, I think it, it's just hard to ignore the match and the synergy between the drivers and the tuning when you hear the mids. Very much a, a tuning style where he reduced the bass, kept the gain very reasonable for lots of detail, um, great female vocals, but no fatigue. Um, and the mids will shine if the driver can deliver. And that's really what happened here is... You open up the mids like that, keep things very linear, and then the driver has to deliver the resolution and the detail and the transitions and all those other technical things that have to happen You know, once you set them up to succeed. And, and here it actually does. And to do it in a TWS actually kind of surprised me. So Trouble, that uh, 2.5, 2 to 5 point, to 2 to 5K, very much gives you that clarity and detail without fatigue level, um, quite good. You know, once you bring down the bass level quite a bit, you don't have to bring up this gain bit. Most sets do this V-shaped pattern where you bring the bass up a little bit because people like a lot of bass, but to really balance that out, you end up bringing up the gain area too high. And in here, you can kind of just see he kept this very shallow. Then he ends up with a very, very nice, non-fatiguing, you know, near perfect gain area. So trouble, like I said, no need to boost over the bass like I was just talking about. The levels are kind of right on the bass level. No need to really boost over that bass because it's actually quite low, perfectly reasonable. The upper level is actually good as well. I do think the upper treble level is, is very much his intentional balance of presence. So you can hear the treble and a little bit of air, but really avoiding fatigue. And to really balance all those three, three, three things, for a very natural sounding upper range, you know, I think that's what it sounds like to me. That was sort of the goal there. Not crazy air, but not lacking either. So if you're very much a um, air type and you love to hear all that extra energy at the upper treble, this one's probably not for you, but um, you know, it's, not, it's actually not, but it's not, it's probably better than what the graph shows as far as the treble presence and uh, not being having the extension, I think that's it's actually pretty good. But I think he's definitely a mids guy, so um, you know I would take that under consideration with your library as well. So the stage, I think the the width and the depth are pretty good. It definitely needs more height. It definitely feels just kind of wide, but not necessarily height at all. And I think part of that goes back to the treble. A little more upper treble may sound a little bigger. Um, but, you know, in its current state, uh, with enough separation, there's just plenty of space, very clean mids, you get very nice separation between instruments and vocals, very much a good use of space, even without a ton of height. And a lot of that is just clean tuning gives you that and enough gain area to have, you know, that little bit of upper to give you a nice separation between notes. Nothing is uh, sort of out of focus or muddy or too soft. Um, just lots and lots of thoughtful tuning and levels and drivers that really went into this, like I've been talking about over and over again. So again, very much like this set. And uh, thank you guys again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.